I dodged round after round of heavy fire, diving for cover behind any rock or mound of earth that would protect me. I needed a moment to gather myself. The relentless onslaught completely disoriented me. I managed to catch my breath, tried to remember where I was. Soon after stepping onto this grey wasteland and seeing the light glowing from the top of the hill ahead of me, the attack commenced. Like a moth flying into the fire, I thought, knowing that the light was my destination. All the way through this dark maze, the light was my guide, letting me know which way to go next. Yet each bright gateway to the next level of awareness was guarded by an archon. These were fierce, troll-like creatures, grotesque, feral, and incredibly strong, each one different and harder to pass than the one before. I had been here for what seemed like weeks, trying to get past this Archon. A sudden explosion made my ears pop and deafened me, making everything around me seem more distant and dreamlike. Time seemed to slow down. I lost my balance, falling over onto my left side. Something told me to lay perfectly still and play dead. Maybe this Archon hadn't actually seen me and was blindly firing into the space, hoping to hit me. Minutes passed. They felt like hours. It was really difficult to know for sure how long any period of time was in this realm. I may have been here for months, or only minutes. Turning my head slightly to the right, I caught sight of something shiny. The wreckage of some type of metallic vehicle which looked like it had been victim to a missile strike. In the shiny surface I saw the reflection of the hill ahead of me, crowned by the gateway of light, my goal. Then I saw him, her, it. The Archon was the size of an elephant, but looked more like a cross between a very muscular pit bull and a mythical fire-breathing dragon. It held no weapon. A red smoky glow pulsed around the being, emanating from its mouth and eyes and covering its whole body. I felt discouraged at the sight of it. Furthermore, I felt discouraged by the piles of bones littered around the bloodied ground that it walked back and forth on. Something had been digging into my side and had developed from an irritation to an annoyance into sheer hell. The sharp edge of it had pierced my skin. I could feel it. I lifted my body slightly to move the object causing me so much distress and saw it to be the remains of a human ribcage. The realisation caused me to jump involuntarily in shock. The dragon dog-like being sensed my movement and began to fire beams of red light from its eyes straight at me. I rolled over quickly, seeing the beams shatter the ribcage into a million pieces, and threw myself behind the wall of a large rock. I knew I needed to shake off this feeling of overwhelm and get back to reality. I reminded myself how strong I was. Look how far I'd come already. How many of these disgusting beings I'd already fended off. I had made it to the threshold, the gateway to beyond. The archetypal hero's journey imprinted in the immortality of our DNA. I had only a few archons to go before entering fully into the kingdom of heaven and merging completely with the light. This one, particularly vicious, was like a rabid animal, growling saliva and blood dripping from its jaws. It was like an amalgamation of all the most demonic of the Archons I had faced so far. Strutting around the entrance like a guard dog, occasionally stopping to pick a morsel of human flesh from its teeth before continuing its patrol of the perimeter, it held its head up and pushed its chest out with an immense and disturbing pride glowing arrogantly with self-importance, so sure of its purpose in testing the hearts of seekers. The beast saw itself as an integral part of the Creator's grand plan, despite its fall from grace into this primitive, animal state. The personalities of the gatekeepers intrigued me. 
The Archons never saw themselves as evil at all, even though their very existence seemed to define evil in all its ungodly, unclean ways. At least the being had purpose, I thought, which is more than can be said for the majority of Earth's inhabitants who walk around daily on autopilot, subject to the wills and suggestions of any and all beings stronger than them. Still, I would prefer to be reincarnated into a more noble form myself. The Archon, its ears pricked, surveyed the landscape in front of it and sensed where I was hiding. It arose onto its hind legs and let out an enormous, nerve-shattering roar before directing a beam of its red misty light at the rock face. The force of the impact caused a crack in the rock to move through it like a bolt of lightning, disintegrating it into thousands of sharp, jagged pieces, many of which scarred and grazed my body as I jumped again away from the fire towards cover. I shot back a psionic laser from my third eye chakra in the direction of the red mist and heard the beast scream out. I must have hit it. Crouching in a trench, formed by the endless wars fought on this stretch of land for all eternity, I peeped over the top and saw the Archon staggering around, obviously hurt, trying to regain its earlier composure. This was the time to make my move. While it was disorientated like this, distracted by its own pain, so I sprang out from the trench and ran towards the monster, internally sending a ray of vibration from the centre of my head down to my heart chakra and allowing the energy to accumulate. As it did, the green light in my chest expanded and fed more light into my aura around my body. Archons were known to recover quickly, so I would have to make haste. Stopping about 30 metres from the animal-like being, I stood in front of it as it became aware of the flaming presence before it, the light of my magnetic field blinding its black, lifeless eyes. A surprised look of doubt and confusion covered its face as I directed the energy now radiating in my chest towards the demon. It raised its claws, trying to block the light from coming in, but it was too late. The ray of green light beaming from my heart overwhelmed the creature, subduing it. The Archon fell back onto all fours and began crying. Its roars turned to a teary sob, wailing with an intense sadness that was a tangible force in itself. I had to focus with all my might and all my strength on my heart chakra and the love energy held there so as not to be affected by the gripping sadness of the beast. The love power had brought truth to the being, stripped away its false pride and self-denial so that it could finally be aware of the savage beast it had become. It stared at its claws, weeping. The hate it discovered that it felt for itself began to turn back on the creature, now that it had been released from years of lair upon lair of self-deception. The terrible depression the Archon hid behind its anger was now heavy in its fullness and seemingly too much for the animal to bear. It started ripping chunks of its own body out with its claws, bashing its head against the hard ground and ended by trying to bite its own arm off. It was such a disturbing sight to behold, knowing that somewhere deep beneath this monstrosity before me was a human soul, hurting and wanting to be set free. The frustration I felt before at being holed up in this place for so long by this entity not letting me pass was now replaced by empathy. The love power I kept in a steady ray of green light enveloping its entire body allowed me to feel the being's truth and its deepest secrets. I could see what the Archon looked like in its past life as a human being. I saw in my mind's eye a lifetime of regrets, bad decisions and failures 
hurt after hurt, piled on a heart already too besieged to cope, leading to a severe depletion of the energy field and the subsequent regression into this animal state, accepting its lower nature and no longer aspiring to its higher self. Where before I had felt a variety of emotions ranging from furious anger to extreme fear, now all I felt for the beast was pity. The creature, now whimpering sadly in a mess on the ground, had refrained from its self-harming, no doubt influenced by the all-seeing, all-knowing power of love which shot from my chest, holding it in a bubble of green-white light. This would have to do. There was nothing more I could do for the beast. It was not my responsibility to nurse it back to clarity and sanity. I had set it free with the truth so it could finally be aware of itself. The rest it would have to do on its own. I still had the rest of my journey to go. I'd been here long enough. It was now time to move on. I released the Archon from the embrace of my light allowing the energy to leave it and return back to my magnetic field, which was now massive and magnificently vibrant, having transmuted the anger of the beast into useful fuel I would make use of in my later levels. The creature, which had been like a giant pit bull terrier in many respects, was now harmless as a puppy dog. It's sad, Wet eyes looked up at me as I walked slowly past it. Gazing with curiosity into the entrance of the gateway, I was calmed by the heartbeat-like ebb and flow of the pulsing light. What challenges lay ahead on the other side of this door? Would the next Archon be worse than this one, or easier to deal with? I focused on transforming this fear of the unknown, this anxiety into excitement. I lifted my head and took a deep breath as I walked confidently into the bright white light of the gateway. <laughs>